So what do we have? We have a quite ridiculous board state right now, honestly. That middle card is kind of interesting. The uh, Queen Grace over there. The Azure Fate Sorceress. And on um, Sorkal's side, a lone Adamantian Scrivener. That's not alternate art. That's the important part about that. It's not mm -hmm. alternate art. Both playing Diamond Sapphire, though, it seems. We have a Benjamin, which is actually looking like it's doing some work right now. Um, Benjamin's a very strong card if it sticks around again. Anything that just generates card advantage, whether it be in the hand or on the field, very powerful. And also, any uh, human can it. itself in the sense that you're, you're drawing more troops freely. You're drawing, you're drawing gas, which makes you more likely to draw shards, even if you are low on shards. So it's quite, quite consistent. A card is Benji. So I believe those gems on the um, on the Azure Fate are uh, flight, and when it when you deal damage, draw a card. When it deals damage to a champion. So this Queen Grace yeah, is lowering the cost of these Azure Fates. Three cost Azure Fates are kind of crazy. Three is a great co is a great um, inspire cost. Two is even better. And Queen Grace can just sit there once a turn. I mean, she's not doing too much damage, but has a pretty decent two-drop body at 1-3. can just sit there, reduce the cost of your Inspire cards, reduce the cost of your, your other cards to be Inspired. Lots of flight. Really, in Mirror Knight, does not fly. But given as his op uh, Steel's opponent is... Um, he's got five charges, he's Dimid, he's got... Adamantian Scrivener. It looks like this deck is life gain based, and is that a, is that a um, counter magic in his discard pile? I believe it is. Almost hidden by the hex logo. It must have already been used then. I can't think of another reason it would be there. <laughs> it's one of the challenges oftentimes of making overlays is not blocking important parts of your screen. We've seen a lot of like hidden graveyards, hidden uh, champion identities. Just, if, you, if you are a streamer, it's just a thing to look at. It's not the end of the world if you're blocking graveyard and we can't see what's inside, but something to keep in mind. So something Well, that was a short-lived Mirror Knight. In fact, a non-lived Mirror Knight. But there is still quite a board presence on Steel's side right now. So that was a counter magic on a mirror knight and a buccaneer on a mirror knight. We've gone from a mirror knight board to a no mirror knight board. Did oh did but oh that was a reduced cost buccaneer. That's how he was able to do that. I was like, where did all these resources come from? No, it looks to yeah, be one. Unfortunately, cost. It doesn't get inspired by the the Azafate though because of that, but. So the one down. Okay, so we've got we've got potentially a, a pet deck here using the the additional troop generation to trigger those scriveners a little bit more often than you would normally. Puts him back to twenty, although he has taken a fair few hits. He also has a a troop in the sky now to potentially deal with that Benjamin. That Benjamin's probably the biggest threat on the board right now. Obviously in the long game as a fate is, but in the short game, the Benjamin's the one that's be gonna be, you know, allowing not only card advantage but a choice of card advantage being able to choose a card it's a pretty strong thing choose the hu exactly the human you want and I'd guess if you're playing Queen Grace and uh, Lord Benjamin most of your deck is probably human as Queen Grace can only reduce the cost of humans we're getting a lot of humans in set 3 um, maybe not as, as a a large amount as in uh, sets one and two, but we're getting quite a few. We'll see if tribal humans. I mean, there's a lot of cool ideas that could be. Town Crier with four humans on the board, that means uh, Steel is going to draw th five cards and discard two. Seems like a pretty good deal. Sort of Hero of Adamant, uh, that's pretty interesting. 
can honestly say I've never seen one of those in a constructed tournament, but there is a first time for everything. I mean, one thought process is, um, is that uh, Rock Elemental is good, why not Hero of Adamant? It even gets plus two per, per reveal. I Does mean, that Azure Fate have the Berry Gem? I didn't see exactly. I think it has a two gem, a, a two gem. It uh, looks to be that mind. way, judging by the deck size. Um, well, maybe not. I'm, is Steel, I, I can't see Steel's deck size. It looks like he's at forty-eight. Um, thirty-eight to thirty. Thirty-eight. Okay. Thirty-nine. Yeah. So okay. It, so it can't be the very gem then, because that would have. Did it just? Uh, we'll I, see. We'll I see. believe it has a, its uh, major power has two sapphire thresholds, so I believe it is when it hits draw a card. Mm -hmm. Or it could oh, be yeah, quick. The fairy gem, <laughs> the fairy gem would be quite good with a hero of adamant. That's for sure. And as Lord Benjamin is unique, and Atrophate Sources is not, that's a pretty clear choice. Benjamin, drawing tons of human cards. PTG Mock pointing out that Queen Grace can make your Vampire Kings invincible. That is its other power. Also, vampire princesses can become invincible. Steel in chat confirming that it has buried. Oh, there you go. Well, that makes Hero of Adamant certainly quite interesting. That can mill a lot of cards. That's kind. That's kind of neat. And I guess the the strong part about that is that when you're playing against a diamond sapphire deck, there really isn't much direct removal. Um, you know, if you just don't attack with Azafate, you don't really need to do. And these aren't cards you normally see in a mill deck at all. You see, I, I see humans. In fact, every troop besides that one uh, Silver Talon Senator is a human on both sides. It's a very humanful game. This cat on screen is very, very restless. I just needed to point that out. Also, I don't think we pointed out this, this um, at all, but the champion choice for um, Steel is one eye open. I don't think we've seen that used so far. I think it was used before we tuned into this game. Uh, there is indeed a king in this deck, but that's not what Steel chooses to get. She chooses to take a time step magistrate, which has the effect of removing. <laughs> oh, I see where this is going. On Azure Fate, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately being counter magic, but I think that's fine, as we're about to see something else. So readying everything with one eye open, the attack has already happened. So that means Queen Grace can give another card minus one. If I had to guess what card is being reduced in cost, it is a certain hero of adamant. That kind of gives away the card name. And here it is. Uh, he's going to reveal some humans. He's going, hero of adamant is zero, zero, and gets plus two, plus two for every human that um, is revealed in your top ten cards. And that's a lot. That's a fair amount of humans. Gotta check if I lost Skype or anything. It is now an eight-eight. 
six six. It is a six six, and it's interesting because he does have another as a fate in hand, as far as I'm aware. We saw that from the the Benjamin. Uh, interestingly, chose to drop the the hero without doing. I might be mistaken. It might have been something else, but I think he does. Could have obviously got the double inspire if he does. But still, a whole bunch of cards. Twelve cards from the top of the deck is no small thing, really. And remembering that he did take a from from Benjamin's attack a time step magistrate, which voids a card and puts it back in play immediately, which would mean at the hero of Adamant gets inspired a second time by as your fate reveals another 10 cards this buccaneer probably is targeting that as your fate though I mean oh. it would be quite silly to bounce anything else other than the as fate at this point obviously the three troops uh, just next to the as fate buccaneer he is returning the hero of adamanth that was maybe the most interesting play I've seen in the whole today and he does not. He may not have another resource to get the three to counter magic. That he might not have a counter magic at all. Um, not which... only does that re remain inspired with the effect, it will bury twelve cards, but it also will get re-inspired, burying twenty-four cards and get um, more and red, get, more humans. Yeah, it will get more plus twos, plus twos. That that play there was basically suicide. So, um, unless a magical card that doesn't exist yet in the game um, is in uh, Shogoth, it could Shogoth could be. That requires three thresholds as well. Oh, he has only two, almost blocked off by the text. I thought it was like, yeah, this was next level. No, Hero of Adamant almost doesn't even need. He can reveal like one human and be fine. It looks like he reveals um, fourteen, so that means he um, another four humans. Um, it's going to go ahead and mill about. 40 some 48 cards from his opponent's deck, maybe a little bit more. Um, there is a lot of digital digital cards being uh, put into his graveyard, and that is a victory for Steel. I don't remember. I do not know which game that was. One or two. Bouncing the hero about a math. I mean, that was clearly. Well, I can only assume that was not understanding quite how that worked. I mean, when's the last time you've seen Hero of Adamant? Probably in a starter trial. <laughs> That's one of those cards that if you if you take a human starter and you go from there, one of the first things most a lot of players tend to do unless they go like, oh humans, I want to play all humans is take that card out. Well, I guess not. It is potentially powerful in an all human deck. It just doesn't do much on its own. It has no keywords, it's just big, it can get answered by just about everything. But in here, with that combination of cards, with the mill gem, the ability to bounce it, put it back, um, seems to have won that game. Now, I'm not sure if this that was a game one, two, or three. Likely not game one, but Steel's actually in uh, Proving Grounds right now. We'll see. Even if this is if this is the end of the match, we are closing in on the end of round two with twelve minutes left in the round. Oh, yeah. Oh, Fridge says this is a known deck. King Gabriel ran it to five two in a cup. Some cup. Okay, I have never seen it. That's a surprise to me. Thank you, Fridge, for the info. Man, my constructed knowledge can use some work. <laughs> Extra is like pain spoiler. Those guys, you guys want pain? A glutton for pain? I I, I can only assume. I'll give you a little more of the art. We know it's all art. It's a resource. It's all art. So is this? Are we waiting for the next game here? Was that? Well, it? actually, now now that you guys are done with that, what what's the time left on the round? Oh, time left in the round. Uh, eleven, just past oh, twelve minutes. Eleven minutes. So I I have to assume Steel 
like they're not gonna that had to be game two or three with a winner there. I'll leave it. Potentially, I just saw him looking through the lists though, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what's got me wondering as well. But uh, if that's the case, we might want to put one of the first spoilers up onto the screen and discuss it as the four of us. Woohoo! Spoiler time! Spoiler time. Alright, so I'm going to go hide the pain. You guys have had enough pain for, for now. For now you've had enough pain. Alright, so... Uh, which which one should we do? I recommend the uh, the, the obvious the, the rarest one last. Well, yeah, that makes that makes sense. We kind of want to go rarest to least rarest. You and that's other way, that. Other way. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, the other way. Yeah. Um, so there's. We should ask chat. We should describe something very generic about each of these cards. <laughs> Well, I mean, we've got one common, right? Oh, did we? I didn't check the rarity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's one common. Should we show the common? We should show... the. It's a common, and actually, I think Paul is going to be super happy about this one. Should we show the... Oh, wait. Well, one second. Did they... Yeah, yeah, no. No spoiler, guys. They're going into game three. Oh, game three. Let's go. Have Spoil. fun with your showcasting. I'm out. Let's do it. Uh, let's Bye. put it back on. Na, 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 na. Here we go. Game three with ten minutes left in the round. Still choosing to keep his hand. It took a while though. Uh, didn't seem like he was too happy. Not uh, a snap keep by any stretch of the imagination. Now, if the match is one and one, and this goes to time, then unless one player can kill the other, and these don't seem like particularly fast decks um, naturally, they'll probably draw and they'll be. How does Battle Feet handle, handle ties in our system? I don't remember, but anyway. Uh, I we, do not know. We, ties, are, ties are fine. Ties are fine. All right, ties are fine. Let's go. Uh, so game three. We see Adamantine Scrivener being one of those. The, the amount of health you gain just doesn't matter if your deck is is buried out from under you. That's true. One of those alternate win conditions. There will be a bit more. You'll see a bit more of that in Armies of Myth, certainly. A lot of Venon archetypes are going to uh, want to do that. Maybe not mill you out, but at least hatch their eggs. Sapphire going down for steel. Sapphire also going down for um, for circle. And probably one of the best turn two two drops for a Sapphire deck, Cerulean Mirror Knight. Those were those, those were handled um, in the previous game, right before we tuned into the stream, by some counter magic play. So, um, so circle not getting the card draw he would have wanted. Adamantine Scrivener beating down for one. It's a little damage, but that's five percent of the way to victory. Five percent of the way. Five percent of the way. That's it's it, quite a quite a lot when you put it that way. It is. I mean, it's it's not a it's not a a trivial percent by any means. Tw I mean, nineteen more attacks from that scrivener. So seeing mirror knight, mirror knight. It's interesting playing a one drop like scrivener in a deck with mirror knights. I mean, it's got to be there for a reason. We didn't specifically see the reason. Uh, there could be a number of things. Um, Life, uh, health gain triggers cards like uh, Incantation of Righteousness, which is fairly strong. It's kind of like another form of Soul Marble in terms of buffing troops. The obvious thing would be just the fact that he seems to be playing all of these pets and 
he wants the double triggers. Um, I said this deck was slow, but maybe I'm about to be corrected. We do see uh, Royal Den Mother. Royal Den Mother gives all pets plus one attack, plus one defense. And we did see uh, Silver Talon send it. Um, Wizards with Silver Talon last game. It's true. And again, I mean, his one and two drops work quite well with um, running just a very heavy pet deck. Obviously, there are no pet troops at one and two, but a Mirror Knight and a Scrivener means that every time you play cards thereafter, you're going to be getting quite a lot of value for doing that. I guess the question still remains, though. Why, why Scrivener and not, say, Shield Trainer? Why not Colin? Why not, I mean, Highlands Magis? For those who, there are still people that don't quite know the nickname, and I don't. I mean, I guess I don't blame people, but that's another story. I mean, ultimately, Scrivener, I suppose, is Paladins. Paladins. Chad is saying. I guess that's another good one. Paladins of the Righteous, double diamond, two two. Whenever you gain a health, uh, gets plus one plus one. That's actually that actually does make Circles deck kind fairly aggro fairly able to win this game in perhaps the five and a half minutes remaining. But I mean, Steel's deck is control, control, a form of control deck. I think the, I don't know, it's, it's strange. Like, considering what Steel's deck does here, I'm not sure that Mirrani is the greatest threat in the world. I mean, it is a threat, it's a great card, knocking it up to three so it can't inspire things is great, but He's not going to be killing any of those things anytime soon. He can um, he get he could double block the uh, the bear, but he loses a troop and then his opponent draws a card. So I don't know how great that is. And he's using up all his resources. I think he, he had to choose something. That's <laughs> a Benjamin uh, on the opposing side of the board this time. That was pretty strong first deal last game. Let's see if it can work the same magic for. Circle here. Two decks playing, both playing Benjamin, but having fairly different goals. He is He's actually going doing to the double block. block. <sighs> Not the best trade, if I'm honest. Uh, losing a Mirror Knight this early is. Not the greatest. I mean, he losing Mirror Knight and not the Buccaneer, because the Buccaneer would draw him a card. Probably. Obviously, the opponent here can choose which one to deal the most but damage actually, to. But he that's does actually, take out the Buccaneer. That's fair because more attack, better able to take out those one ones. Not that Mirror, Mirror Knight's any slouch at taking out one ones itself. He wants some Paladins, but. He hasn't done much damage yet, and with three and a half minutes left in this round, I'm I'm actually looking at the um, the delayed. I have my I have the. I was actually looking at the stream. We actually have three minutes left in the round, and one of these players has to close out the game, otherwise it'll end up in a draw, which could be okay. It's, it's going to be loss. difficult to close against uh, a scrivener. That's for sure. At the same time, it's going to be difficult to close with three one attack troops on the board on the other side I mean as long as that Benjamin sticks around I think you'd be surprised how quickly humans can close but it's certainly not gonna be easy for either either one here obviously the the berry takes time to set up uh, you know you do need at least two troops on board to have that start going uh, one being the as of fate the other being probably the hero to get it done quickly um, and yeah, I mean, going against a Scrivener when you only have a 1 2 on board, not really going to be the quickest of things. And he's taken a, a while to think about what he wants to do here as well. Victoria seems to be the play. Maybe he just uh, was thinking about the fact he didn't really want to let through that Benjamin, but perhaps he just wanted the life drain a little bit more. The Benjamin is 
really the most powerful card on you know board right I, now. I just realized because of the chat, the stream is on a five minute delay. So they actually have six about six minutes as of this writing before time. It's a good point. Thank you, chat. Silver Talon coming down pre-combat. Uh, that may say a lot about the deck and saying that there isn't really much you can draw from Benjamin here that's better than a Wizard of the Silver Talon. Um, but definitely interesting again. Goes with the Benjamin. Looking quite good for Circle here, really. Uh, he definitely has board presence and he definitely has evasion troops. Does pick up a card from Benjamin there as well. Den Mother, of course, buffing the Senator here to, to a 2 2. It's quite good. Looks like he plays as a fate sorceress, which is definitely strong for him here. Um, obviously, one of the pieces he needs to to get his berry on the go also stops the Benjamin from swinging in, which is time is up. Attention, all also players. Not terrible. Time is up. Um, but the opponent could have a buccaneer for this sorceress. Right, that is time in the round. We're going to continue casting this game, but if you are still playing your game, that is the sign to go into end of match procedures. Go to your five extra turns. Call a judge if you need to. If you have not already reported your results, go do so. Technically, here in spirit through the voice. Anyway, let's continue. Living totem is not a pet. It's also not a human. Is pretty good. I mean, but despite this board, as your fate sorceress has life drain. Um, the, the troops aren't actually that big. A lot of them can be blocked by Victoria, by Mirror Knight. Now, very, very conservative attack still. Benjamin and Silver Talon Senator buffed up. Conservative, sure, but he is going in with a 1 1 against the 2 2, which is. Apparent. I, I. Not only a 2 2, a 2 2 life drain. I'm not sure. Maybe he really wanted to get that Senator through there. It does buff the uh, Wizard of the Silver Talon. Whenever the Silver Talon Senator damages a champion, its master gets plus one. Plus one. Now, we said it might be hard for for, circle, uh, for Steel to get through Circle's um, health, given Scrivener and all this health gain, but deck size don't matter. I mean, that's true, but at the, at the time, he, he didn't have any way to bury, really. It was fairly early in the game. Town Cry is going to do four off the top there and draw a whole bunch of cards. So he has to discard two, choose two of those. We do see a counter magic coming off of the top of the deck there too. Looks like 30 cards left in Circle's deck. Might be able to pull this one out. Again, not much direct removal in in Diamond Sapphire, really. Only only bounce, only hand return and cost increase for the most part. So if this as a face sorcerer sticks around for a couple more turns, Steel might have this one in the bag, but at the same time, these totems keep hitting the board. What's interesting there is that um, Circle there did have three resources open at the end of Steel's turn, and he, Forgot. he neglected to buff the Living Totem there. That would have been a pretty big deal this turn, I feel. Uh, he could have given it Flight and plus one, plus one, making Steel's trades not ideal.
But it's also three resources that could represent. It could represent counter magic if uh, it could for for sapphire, or shogoth. Uh, that's Hero of Adamant. Hero of Adamant doing work last time. Hero of Adamant is actually a 10 10. That is 20 cards about to be milled. Buried off of the top of Circle's deck. And that's a big board. That's a lot of living totems. It's a lot of stuff, but Steel's still at 18 health. Time should be running down at the time of this. Um, this is on a five minute delay at the time of this. But with less than 20 cards left. All right, we're go we'll finish off this game, but round three seems to be ready to go. So players in the tournament, round three, um, and we'll start the timer momentarily. Find your opponents, get those games going. You have 70 minutes for round three. Go ahead and begin. Kind of funny to uh, to finish off a round two cat round two game with round three about to begin, but <laughs> such is such is the nature of stream delays. I mean, there are ten cards left in this deck. One more turn might do it here. Especially if if Circle can't do anything about this Azure Fate Sorceress. We have not seen that much removal in this game. Just troops, troops with uh, not so great sizes as to threaten to end the game. Um, and that is a King Gabriel. That'll do it. That'll do it. With no chance of counter magic. And time step magistrate as well. I think still has the There's resource two options for that. Here. I mean, he could time step the, the hero. He could play the King Gabriel. King Gabriel being, uh, you know, a total of 21 power? No, 19. Right? That's a lot. 19. 19 cards from Gabriel and Boldheart. So with that, whoosh goes the deck, all those angels, all those other cards. Boldheart comes in, finish off, off the rest of the deck, and that is going to be the end of this game and the match for Steel. Good game. Steel wins. All right. So...